minds, tongues, attitudes, temperaments that we would not sin against you today. Deliver us, Lord, from temptation, evil, and sin. And grant us, Lord, your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to love right, to live right, to think right, to do right. And Lord, help everyone here to pray for themselves and everyone out there to pray for themselves. And Lord, we pray for the salvation of millions. We pray for the revival of millions. We know that you're able and we know that your gospel is that powerful. And uh, but we need to get right with you. And uh, Holy Father God, we pray that you deliver each and every one of us who name the name of Christ, who believe on Christ, deliver us from spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, family, financial, legal, uh, uh, debt, food, Christ problems, housing crisis problems, uh, marriage and family problems today. And we pray for the comfort and healing of those people by the mouth who are hurting because of illness, who are now gone because of the coronavirus plague situation. Comfort them as only you can. Help them to turn eyes to you, Lord Jesus, and to the comfort of the Holy Scriptures. For the the matter is we have no words and we can't help them anyway because we can't get close to them as we have been able to in the past. And so, Holy Father God, uh, uh, if someone who had through tribulation or and who is people by phone or by Test help them to do that. And Holy Father God, I pray for every Christian and every Christian family that you'll bless and protect our families from ourselves, from our flesh, and from the devil, and from the demons of hell, and from evil people in the family, people in the church. Lord, if there's any abuse at all in any Christian family, Lord, we pray that you have brought it and stop it and uh, do necessary for it to be. And Lord, Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would rebuke and bind the devil and the, the demonic spirit of abuse family, no matter what the situation. And uh, Holy Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Lord, protect us from evil people in the world, evil people on the job, business, evil people. Lord, uh, in the, where we find ourselves as your people, with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight has to be wise as serpent. And Holy Father, posture to humble regarding the coronavirus. And that is, Lord, for us not to be arrogant because we uh, claim to be Christians and act like we don't deserve the punishment of the coronavirus. We do, each and every one of us. And we need to take a humble posture and admit that, and admit also that we deserve to go to hell right now. Uh, since we have been Christians, we deserve to go to hell. God, have mercy and grace upon us. For Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us of our sins and failures and faults, even as believers. For the dramatic is we're the reason why this plague is upon us the disobedient Christians especially, but we are not much better, those of us, Lord, who name the name of Christ. And so, Lord, help us not to get the big head. Help us not to look down our nose at people who are suffering and hurting. Help us not to have an arrogant spirit, but a humble spirit, and to be thankful and grateful. The angels are protecting us, that you are 
are not allowing the plague to come, come to our house. Because what, what would be more painful than dying of the plague myself is uh, a family one of my that would be even some young people have young people die. some children are dying now comfort these families that have children who are uh, uh, dead because of this plague be they little children or the ages of 18 to 40 plus or 50 plus. Lord, uh, you know all about it. Commit everything into your hands and uh, we pray that your will would continue to un- break us, make us, and mold us to be what you would have us to be. For my prayer still remains the same. Be thorough with us. Be thorough with us. We really do not want to go back to normal because normal is what got us in this mess in the first place, and we deserve it. Thank you for loving us so much that you refuse to let us stay the same. You refuse to let us continue in our sin and destroy ourselves and destroy the blessings for others and destroy the benefits that you have bestowed upon us. Because, Lord, you're so loving and so merciful and so gracious, you 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 would rather bless, but you can't bless when we, your people, are embarrassing you. And when we, your people, called by your name, are in sin and promoting sin and allowing sin. And we have done so in your church. All the way to the White House and in the government, Lord, we have failed you. And that's just the reality. You you know it, and we know it. And I pray that you will raise up your people to stand against the evil. Enjoy your blessings and benefits again on the side for the rapture to take place and for the tribulation to come and your wrath to be shown in a very real uh, sense. Until then, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for all of it is due your name. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for us say, Amen. Right back at the same spot you were here. You gotta back up. All the way. Dr. Harry Bicknett There is no magic formula for doing family devotion. There are as many different ways to do devotions as there are unique families and individuals. And that's a fact. You do not need to have a Bible college degree or a seminary training or seminary training to lead family devotion. The important thing is to begin to ask questions, get your children talking about God and faith based upon a word of God. A simple pattern for family devotion is hymn. Number one. Number two, pray. Number three, read the scriptures. Number four, discuss the scriptures or uh, teach the scriptures. And then pray again and sing another hymn. That's it. And it does not have to take long. I'm full-time in the ministry, so uh, have been so for 40 years by the grace of God. Now, so there
therefore our family devotions may take on a different uh, tack. So we've had family devotions for two or three hours, sometimes, sometimes four. You don't have to do that. You can have a great family devotional time for 10 to 15 minutes or less. Always remember the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer only takes a minute to pray. And then after you have family devotions, may I encourage you to pray without ceasing. And what uh, Dr. Warren points out, he learned from some monks. They call it breath prayers, where, where you just, every often you just pray, Lord, a prayer, Lord, help me to do this. Lord, help me to get this. Lord, help me to get through this, etc. Holy Father God, we pray now for the healing of every Christian marriage and family. We pray for the salvation of lost people in Christian marriages and families. For sometimes we may have a spouse that is lost. Deceived about their salvation. Uh, family members take faith and so on. Lord, we pray for the healing of all Christian marriages and family, families. And we pray for the salvation of family members. We pray for the salvation of all families that they know to be their Savior. And, and we pray that your holy give them rest until they are convicted in the uh, believing in, in Christ. And then, Lord, have, have mercy on us. Christians have uh, refused to obey the Great Commission or your Great Commission trying to witness that uh, raise up, Lord, uh, labor not us, me us, uh, to be a witness to these families, because we know that they're children. And grant us all your grace and strength and the power of your Holy Spirit in our family life to not only protect our family, obey your Holy Word, found in Ephesians chapter 5 and chapter 6, and other For the family that prays and obeys together, stays together. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and forsake. Amen. Did you give everything? Okay. Let's recite or read the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Let these words sink in as you read them. Don't just blow by them. Because if you truly believe this, you ought to be a changed individual. If you believe the Apostles' Creed, you ought to be fired up and ready to go for Jesus. And that's a fact. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He was seen alive by Mary Magdalene and the other women. The disciples and over 500 other brethren. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And beloved, if you believe that, you ought to confess your sins, you ought to repent, you ought to turn from your evil ways, and you ought to serve your king instead of your God. <clears throat> with every fiber of your being. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, <clears throat> verses 10 through 20. This is a passage, this is a family verse passage. This is a family passage. This is a passage that we we never failed in reading this passage. I got to the point where by the grace of God I was doing my job. I know that's hard to believe because you meet people who don't believe that men do their jobs <coughs> as husband and father. But there are many men who do. You just don't hear about it because they don't brag about it. many men who are faithful to God. I should say that. That's right. So there were times after a while when I would skip over some of my verses because I'm just all I could figure in the house and read everything else. But we never fail reading this passage. Why? Because the reason why you will struggle with family devotions is not because it's hard physically or mentally. It's only hard because the devil does not want you to pray together and obey together in the family so that you will stay together. That's the reason. Plus, your flesh does not want to do it. Just like your flesh does not want to exercise because you love eating. You have to overcome that inertia on the things that are important in life. And prayer and reading the Bible is the most important thing you'll ever do in this life outside of trusting Christ as Savior. So read this with us. I want you to turn to the passage, pull your phone out. Your device, I know there's a debate going on in Christianity it's a, it's a, it's a, I think it's a pharisaical uh, human tra tradition debate it's, a, it's, a, it's an unnecessary debate whether or not you should read the Bible the physical Bible or read the Bible on your device as long as it is the word of God read it I don't care if it's on your phone, your Kindle, your, uh, uh, hey, turn this around and light this up, Miss Lizette, green light. She's saying that it's not showing up. Okay, turn around again. Okay, check these out here. Okay, the green light is on. I don't care if it's your Kindle, iPad, mini iPad. Whatever you have, it is the Word of God. And, uh, and one preacher says, well, you got people, Christians, who are looking at pornography on their phone, then they flip to the Bible on their phone. They ought not to do that. Well, first of all, you ought not to be looking at pornography on your phone. If you're saved and born again, you will confess that as sin and repent, and you won't do that anymore. That's, that's the first thing. So use whatever device you have to turn to the Bible. Uh, I think they call it, the, the main one is the U version. Is that correct back there in the back? U version? Is that it? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the one you want. Uh, so, and there are many others. So 
and read your Bible on your phone and let, let God's Word take over your phone instead of the evil stuff that you might have done in the past. If you're a child of God, you need to repent. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is what you need to be trying to get a hold of when you're praying in the morning and reading the Bible and having family devotions. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, let me let you in on a secret. I don't care what kind of family you have. The devil is going to target somebody in your family as a doorway to get in there. And so this is why you need to put on the whole arm of God, and everybody in your family needs to do it. You will be amazed. That no matter how much you pray, how the devil will try to edge on up into your family and try to cause a problem and Whoever is the weak one, he's going to come through that person. Be it a spouse, be it a child, a young person, a teenager, whatever the case, or a young adult. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high. I placed it. This is a key verse for the family. You've got to stop thinking for your husband or your uh, young adult child or teenager is the main problem. They might be a problem and they have to take responsibility for the problem that they're causing, but the devil is behind it. Always remember that. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That'll, that'll help you to stay calm and keep your blood pressure down. Make you, if you to wait, if you have to chastise somebody in the man.